I'm going to do a quick example of an isometric drawing. So isometric drawings are those drawings that most students think are three-dimensional. They're actually two-dimensional. They appear on a flat surface, but they appear to be three-dimensional. So most common isometric drawing would go ahead and just be set up something like that, just a basic cube. Now, some places that you go ahead and learn about isometric drawings talk about how isometrics have three 120 degree angles in them that they go ahead and use. Right here would be 120 degrees. Right here would be 120 degrees. And right up here would be the 120 degrees, the last one. Those of us that learned back when they still used T-squares and 30, 60, 90 triangles would go ahead and remember that we drew them with 30 degree angles off of our T-square. So these would both be 30 degree angles. Which is still the same concept if you go ahead and draw this line down right here. We have our 30 degrees plus 90 would give us the 120 that we go ahead and learn with today. In most drawings that we go ahead and do, we're going to have the three main views that we learn about in multi-view drawings and other types of drawings. We have a front, top, and right side. Same thing in this isometric drawing. We'd have a front, top, and right side. Also, we have three common dimensions that we use in different types of drawings. We have height, width, and depth, hence three-dimensional objects. In any one view, you're going to have two dimensions. The same idea that any one flat surface is going to be two-dimensional. So in the front view, we would have our height and our width. In our right side view, notice that it shares the height with our front view. We also have our depth. Then you also notice that our top view shares our width and our depth with our front view and our right side view. So that takes care of the three basic views that are most common in an isometric along with our height, width, and depth. The only place that we can measure true measurements on an isometric drawing are on these three main axes. When we go ahead and start getting a corner cut off of them, if we were to go ahead and draw a line at an angle, so if I were to go ahead and cut this corner off something like that, it is not going to be a true measurement. The reason why is because on most objects, if we had a cube or something like that, this would be a 90 degree angle, so then we could go ahead and calculate and draw that angle line there. It would go ahead and be a true measurement. This is actually 120 degrees, which would throw off that measurement like you'd learn in math class dealing with different triangles. So that is the basics of an isometric drawing. If we were going to go ahead and try to cut off an angle like that, we would go ahead and have to measure along one of the main axes that we're used to. So for instance, if I drew a basic shape here, Now, green is representing drawing lightly or pencil, and I will do a demonstration here in just a little bit on paper and pencil. So if that's my object, and I know I need this corner cut off right here, I would measure my distance down from my corner that needs cut off and back from my corner that needs cut off on the two axes that I have access to, and I would go ahead and draw my angled line in there that touches those two points. I'd then be able to project that line back and I could connect the two new points that I went ahead and got to get my object or get the corner cut off of my object. Then once I was done with my construction, I could go back and go ahead and darken in my entire object. This, of course, is a very simple object. If I have a more complex object, as I go ahead and create different views, I like to go ahead and box in the different surfaces and darken in different lines that I have. So my black lines would represent my darkening in. Right there would be that completed object. This line would not be a true measurement if I actually built the object. Next, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate an isometric drawing on paper and pencil. I'm going to go ahead and try to just adjust the camera to that.
and hopefully that's close enough that you can go ahead and see what I'm sketching. So if I'm dealing with this first object up here, what I like to do when it's a little more complex object like this is I like to start with the box that it's going to fall within. So if I count here, this is one, two, three, four, five, six boxes wide, three boxes tall, and three boxes deep. So when I come over to the space that I'm going to sketch on, I'm going to pick any point to be my bottom corner right here, and I'm going to go ahead and sketch very lightly three boxes deep, three boxes tall, and six boxes wide. And I'm going to go ahead and create the box that closes all of that in. Now this may be a little light for you to go ahead and see on the camera, but I've created a box that is six boxes wide, three boxes deep, and three boxes tall. Now what I go ahead and do is I like to take a surface at time, since this is a little more complex, and darken in as I create it. So if I look at my top surface, I can see I have a three by three box there. I've already got most of that set up. I would need a line across here. And I would go ahead and darken in that surface, since it's all going to be object lines. So once again, you probably can't see real well past or through my hand, but if I darken my lines, I darken those in, darken that in, darken that in, because those are all going to end up being object lines on my object. Now I can move to whatever view I want to do next. I like to cover whatever touches the outside edges of the box first. So if I move to my front view, I can see I only have those two boxes that touch. Once again, I start by sketching them lightly, making sure I have it right before I darken it and darkening those in. And the last surface that it's going to touch is the front view. From this corner that I already had on my top view, it comes down two boxes. Right there it's going to come out two boxes and drop down to finish off. Once again, I'm going to darken all of that in so that I don't have to worry about it, get confused later about my different lines. Then I'm going to go ahead and start working with different surfaces as I work my way in. It's kind of up to you what way you want to go with it. I'm going to go ahead and start with this 2x2 two two block right here. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch that. goes back in two from that corner, comes over this way, and then comes back to this corner. I like to darken everything as I go. That way it is easier to go ahead and see later on. And that way I don't forget what lines are which. The construction lines kind of get in the way sometimes and hard to tell what you're trying to do. So that's darkened. From there, I'm going to do this little face right here. Once again, I'll darken it. And I can go ahead and do this little line right here that connects out to my front or my right side face. This top surface here goes back three blocks, so I'm going to do that next. One, two, three, and it goes over and connects back up to itself. And I might as well darken that too. And I've got a couple lines left. I've got one right on the inside here and one right on the inside here. So I have this inside line and this inside line. I'll darken those now as well. So right there is how I would go ahead and create this isometric drawing on isometric graph paper. Then for tonal shading, if I was going to do tonal shading, I'd say that my light source is up here somewhere shining down on this object that I've got right there. So I can see that this is my darkest surface, my front faces. My right side faces are kind of a medium shade and then my top has no shading. So what I like to do is on the medium shade surface, I go ahead and just draw angled lines parallel to that 30 degree angle going back. Just for a little bit of shading. On the front face, I also draw those 30 degree lines. So these would be parallel or continuations of my right side angled lines.
Then to really make my front view stand out from the others, I go ahead and also draw vertical lines on it. So I go ahead and had the angled 30 degree lines as well as vertical lines. So then my front faces stand out just a little more than my right side faces and my top faces have no shading. That is how I go ahead and sketch an isometric drawing.